Hello everyone, welcome to my online lecture series on the course Medieval Science and Metallurgy. Myself, uh, Dr. L. Banu Prakash, Associate Professor, working in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at MLR Institute of Technology, Hyderabad. So, this is a overview of uh, today's presentation. So, first, I uh, will be briefly introducing uh, the materials, material science. Then we will uh, look at uh, some fun activity. Then we will understand the history behind the materials. That is how materials are evolved around us. Then we will uh, look at what is the need for studying about the materials. Then we will try to get the essence of what these subjects will deal with material science. Metallurgy, uh, metallurgy and materials engineering. So, what it all talks about, so what it discusses, we will uh, briefly look at it. Okay. So, let us start with a brief introduction. So, we all know that uh, materials are around us and it is having a great influence in almost every segment of uh, the field. Right. So, materials are uh, considered to be the building blocks for the world and uh, it has influence in almost every segment. Uh, so, that is touching every facet of our day-to-day uh, -day life, right. So, some of the segments that I have mentioned, so if you look at uh, transportation, so right from your automobile uh, vehicles to the infrastructure, so we were using different uh, varieties of materials. Then uh, looking at the housing for the construction, we were using different type of materials and uh, then clothing, so again what we wear, different types of clothes uh, that is again based on the different seasons, we, we use different type of materials. Then for the communication devices like our mobile phones or our uh, radar systems or our uh, antenna and other uh, electronic systems, so which basically the backbones for the communication, so that uses a different type of wide variety of materials. Then what we eat basically, how they are produced, so the manufacturing machines or the packaging industries for the moment of the goods, then uh, the agricultural products, so each, each and everything is aligned with the different type of uh, materials. So with this brief introduction, so let us uh, uh, have some uh, activity, so we will try to uh, I will show you some of the photographs and we will try to identify what are the type of materials that we encounter in day to day life, right. So, before dwell into the topics of main topics, mainstream topics of material science and engineering. So, let us have this fun activity. So, basically it is identifying the materials that we use in our day to day life. So, for that uh, please allow me to take you all to my house and uh, I have taken some of the photographs and let us identify one and uh, one to one. So, what are the different type of materials that have been involved here? So, this is my house, beautiful house. Then, uh, so uh, you can look at uh, the first photograph that is basically the entrance. At the entrance, you can see the gates, right? So, these gates that are made out of iron materials, right? So, these gates are basically made out of uh, iron. So, majority of the southern parts of uh, India, so we basically prefer using the iron gates. Then the next photograph, you can see the staircase along with the other materials. So, here you can see this particular portion. So, that is, uh, so this particular portion that is uh, glass. So, that is a see-through glass window. So, for weaving the outside activities. Then we have the railing system here. So, this is a railing system, the support system while we are uh, climbing onto the stairs. So, that is railing is made out of the steel pipes. Then uh, you can look at the floor for the uh, uh, staircases. So, both for the flooring as well as the staircase flooring, we have used granite, granite marble stone. So, as you can uh, uh, notice, these uh, Granite marble stones are being used in the southern part of India mostly because of the abundance of the material resource that is available, particularly in the Telangana state of India. Then the second, third photograph, you can look at uh, the walls. Walls are being uh, uh, 
covered with these uh, tiles so that is a uh, vitrified tiles so these are vitrified tiles combined together basically the purpose of this is to prevent the water seepage uh, through the walls or and also in addition to that it also gives a aesthetic appeal to the walls then you can look at uh, the piping the water piping lines so water piping lines all are uh, made out of uh, pvc water pipe pvc water pipes polyvinyl chloride uh, plastic water pipe lining then finally we have adopted the fifth photograph you can see we have adopted uh, the recycled plastic or basically polyethylene plastic containers for the greenery for adding the greenery to the houses for the plantation basically okay then uh, we will look at uh, this is a uh, exterior so outside of the house so outside you can see these are the photographs that i've taken outside of the house and we will let us uh, go into the house and uh, look at what are the uh, materials that we use so let us start with the first uh, photograph that we use inside the house so we use uh, air coolers that is made out of uh, chopper fiber reinforced uh, plastics so small chopper fibers they have been uh, reinforced using the plastic materials then we were using uh, the chairs which are made out of uh, polypropylene then for the containers right from the you can see the uh, porcelain jars basically that are used for storing your uh, pickles then using the summers uh, summer season so we use the pottery items different pottery items basically to for the basically for the cool water in the summer that is uh, clay pottery clay is a material raw material right then in addition to that we also use other type of materials like uh, for the containers so here uh, for the water uh, uh, storage or water usage we prefer uh, containers that are plastic containers which are made out of uh, polyethylene terephthalate pet or uh, ldp low density polyethylene or polypropylene uh, water bottles then along with it we also use uh, other containers which are made out of uh, steel then the copper then we have bronze containers also usually we use in our day to day life for storing the water and other means along with that we also use other uh, utensils in our kitchen so which includes uh, steel containers and aluminum based uh, utensils right so if you look at uh, all together so we have the access of uh, different type of materials that we use in our day to day life so let us understand how these materials are actually started uh, coming around us so uh, if you look at the history we can understand how these materials are evolved so what exactly has happened so which material has first been observed and then how we have evolved what is the progress and all and this is very much important for understanding any society so any societal uh, development which uh, basically um, happens happened due to the two reasons one is the manipulation of the materials that are existing at the, during that period or the production of uh, new materials so that also uh, is an important uh, factor which will uh, provide uh, understanding about the society how the how it has been evolved and uh, and things like that and uh, these are uh, evident in the three categories as you can uh, recall so that is we categorize them as the stone age bronze age and iron age right so let us look at uh, those periods and how these materials are been evolved uh, we will examine now so i have taken the time chart here uh, right from the 10000 uh, bce to the ad 1 so if you look at uh, holden days the starting era of uh, human uh, uh, period so evolution of the human so we were uh, in the very early times we were having uh, we were available with the materials like uh, stone uh, wood and uh, animal skins animal skin and other type of materials so those are the raw materials that we were having at the very early stages of uh, life then what we have used over the time so we have tried to develop some of the tools that are made out of these existing materials so 
the, here you can look at the figure. So these stones are being combined with uh, the wood material. So basically using a thread. Okay, that is also naturally existing material. So basically that is extracted from the plant, right? So the, here this is a thread. So thread has been used for combining your stone as well as uh, the wood material. Uh, like that we have uh, developed tools. So we can say that this is the first uh, technological leap that is uh, uh, witnessed in the tech, uh, in our uh, human uh, era, the progress, right? Then uh, in the 8000 BCE, around 8000 BCE, so the discovery of uh, fire has transformed, uh, uh, has brought a transformative change in our lives. So we have understood uh, the uh, the usage of uh, these this fire and producing the materials. Um, so the best example we can get, we can say is a pottery. So pottery is a material we can call it as the engineered material, the first engineered material, which has basically improved the properties of the material the raw material is here it is again the clay clay is a raw material that is already existing material but clay has been properly utilized uh, with the help of uh, fire and we could able to produce utensils which are made out of this clay that is a pottery items so we can say these are the this is the first uh, engineered material uh, so which has uh, great uh, utility even today also we were using it and uh, it has it has great uh, endurance also durability also right so it is lasting for quite some time as well so we can say that is the first engineered material by the human so th later so we have uncovered uh, some of the metals so the first uh, uh, metal that we have uncovered or the early metals that we have uncovered uh, uncovered from the earth that is a copper and gold so copper the moment we have discovered uncovered these uh, copper metals so we immediately started producing this uh, copper copper based tools so in the place of these uh, tools that are developed uh, based on uh, wood and stone right so this is a period uh, these are the materials and the tools that were existing that were present in the period of uh, stone age then uh, as the time evolved so we have understood that uh, with the help of uh, heat treatment process so by selectively picking the materials we started combining one or two one or more uh, two or more materials for producing altogether a new material so that is the bronze so bronze we know that it's a combination of copper and tin right so copper is a one material and the tin is another material they were both were selectively picked and uh, and they were been combined to produce into altogether a new material that is bronze so the beauty of this bronze is it is it is having a greater mechanical strength when compared to these copper based materials so copper based materials now we know that it is basically a ductile in nature soft in nature so it, it will not take more amount of load but however if you look at the bronze bronze can take uh, bronze is having greater uh, mechanical strength when compared to these uh, uh, monolithic materials right so immediately what people have done is uh, they have replaced all the tools with these uh, bronze tools right as you can see in the figure itself so we call this era so this era has been extended up to the ad1 so this era we called it as a bronze age then the discovery of uh, iron ores has again significantly changed our uh, evolution or our human uh, progress it has propelled uh, greatly our human progress the discovery of iron ore immediately we have come up with a new material that is a iron so iron the beauty of iron is again lighter in weight so when uh, so before this iron material has been discovered we were all present with the bronze based tools though bronze is giving greater uh, mechanical strength uh, compared to the existing uh, material 
during that period the drawback with the bronze is it is heavier in weight so the weight of the bronze material is uh, significantly higher when compared to the iron so the moment uh, we have produced a lighter material we have identified the lighter material but yet they are strong enough and comparable with the bronze and the strength of the bronze are superior or greater than the strength of the bronze so immediately humans have replaced all the bronze tools with the iron tools and some of them are been uh, noted here so all the tools iron uh, tools uh, you can notice uh, that has that are been used okay and we called it uh, as this this period as a iron age so right from starting from uh, to ad 1 very early uh, stages to even in the 19th century or 1950 or 20th century also it has extended even today also we were using the uh, majority of the materials that are based on iron based alloys right so so iron has been again uh, we have understood that the problem with the iron is your uh, corrosion so corrosion is a problem so corrosion is a, a greater problem especially when the, when the, the material is brought to the sea shores the salty areas so when it is been interacting with the salt water also uh, it is significantly the material is getting corroded that means uh, material is been eaten away so ultimately the strength of the material is deteriorating right so how we have uh, so this was the greatest problem that time so again we started uh, looking at the different materials what we can add to this uh, uh, iron material so that the corrosion problem can be uh, solved okay we can eliminate uh, that corrosion problem so we have understood uh, the structure of the material as well as we have understood the heat treatment process and the addition of the new elements and the behavior of the material and that's how we have come up with the steel the production of the steel material so steel is a backbone for many engineering marvels that we are seeing in our day to day life and we'll talk about it more in the in detail in the upcoming uh, lectures then uh, in the 1930s and 19 uh, uh, around 1930 we have come up we have uh, come up with a new material that is a plastic uh, the plastics basically the raw material has been um, coming from your natural material okay from the plant extraction plastic materials so using this uh, material so we could able to produce uh, uh, components uh, so which are again uh, lighter in weight when compared to uh, iron uh, based tools obviously so whatever the daily use components daily used uh, metal components all these were replaced with plastic material because of their lighter in weight okay so light in weight so we have almost uh, replaced all the materials in our day to day life with the plastic materials so that is a polymer age we call it as a polymer age so even today also we were using huge amount of uh, plastic materials then uh, in the 1960s around 19 uh, 1970s uh, we have come up with a material that is we have understood the uh, behavior of this silicon material so which was which was the or which is the backbone for our uh, information era we can call it as silicon age or the information era now right now we we were in the information era right the backbone for the information era the electronics that we are seeing that is basically utilizing this silicon as a base material so here you can see in the image that is a silicon wafer so in this single silicon wafer we will be producing uh, millions of uh, devices small transistors right so that miniaturization again uh, uh, in the 1990s uh, so we have understood that uh, the materials which are very very small in size we call it as a nano dimensional scale that is 10 to the power of minus 9 meter uh, dimensional scale the materials are behaving slightly uh, different when compared to the 
traditional uh, behavior so traditional uh, material whatever properties uh, that it is exhibiting so that is completely uh, different from the behavior is completely different when the materials are brought to the nano dimensional scales so it is exhibiting uh, a flawless behavior so you can see the structure which are not having any defects obviously it is producing the theoretical uh, behavior theoretical properties for the material and that has revolutionized uh, uh, the science uh, development of the science now we were working with uh, different nano materials and we were looking at the technological advancement in this period right now we were in the nano material the era of uh, nano materials we were expecting huge advancement in this uh, field in the upcoming uh, decades right so this is how materials are evolved so basically uh, the weight reduction uh, so depending on our requirement so we have looked at the the material the chemistry uh, behind the material the structure the combination of uh, different materials and uh, we were looking at the desired properties right so that is how uh, materials have been uh, evolved so all the time lighter in weight and greater uh, strength capabilities and greater functionality we were looking at these uh, materials so right now we were uh, available with wide uh, varieties of materials right but why we have to study about this material so what is the need for uh, studying about this material so let us say we were developing some product or any structure and uh, that product or structure need to have this function a particular functionality or it need to withstand particular loads so with our desired uh, uh, amount of uh, load withstanding capability or the functionality we have to selectively pick the materials which can do this job right so there is a wide segment of material so how do we select out of these thousands of uh, materials that are available uh, right now right so for for this we have to understand the material so material behavior or material understanding about the materials is very very important so selecting the right material from thousands of materials that are available is very critical for any product or structure so there are again several criteria um, so how we will be selecting so that depends on several criteria uh, some of them are being listed here so first one is the properties so we have to look at the property of the material uh, so whether that will withstand this much uh, particular load or whether this will have this kind of uh, functionality so that properties we have to evaluate first then we have to look at the um, serviceability of that material okay so whether properties over the time whether the properties are deteriorating or not so particularly if you use any material in the construction field let us say so if you develop uh, some kind of bridge uh, with, with using a particular material if uh, if the service of that bridge is not available for next 10 years or maybe 20 25 years down the line so the amount of cost that we are producing uh, that we are putting uh, in that project it will go into vain so it is not economically feasible right so we have to use the right material uh, so in order to use the right material we have to understand there and understand the property deterioration during the service period so how many years the property of the material is not altering it's not deteriorating then the third point uh, third important point is a cost and availability of the material whether the even though your properties are you have chosen based on the property and uh, the property the material is not deteriorating for quite uh, longer duration and the third point we have to check is the cost and availability of the material right so whether the cost is more than whether it is uh, feasible or economically feasible or not we have to look at it so there are few uh, segments where we we don't uh, um, consider the cost is a cost never is a matter so something like uh, aerospace or the space uh, um, applications so we never cost is never a constraint over there so obviously cost is matters but functionality or the desired properties is very very critical over there 
and the availability of the material is also very crucial uh, uh, parameter while selecting your uh, material. The last point is the cost effectiveness for producing the producing such kind of component that is a processing techniques. So, how do you use? So, how do you uh, do this processing of this material? So, what is the cost that is been incurring for processing the material? So, that also we have to look at. So, these are some of the points that you have to look at uh, before selecting uh, selecting the right material for your product or any structure. Right. So, this all comes when you understand about the materials. So, this signifies the importance of uh, studying the materials. Okay. So, now we will look at uh, the subjects, uh, the terminology. So, this is a material science. So, material science is a one subject which uh, involves investigating the relationships. Okay that is existing between the structures and the properties of the material okay the relationship that is existing between the structure between the structure and the property of the material so the science that is uh, behind these two will be talking about talking we will be talking in the material science so let us look at it what is this structure and whether structure will have any relationship with the property so let us take an example and then we will we will try to understand what it all means structure property relationship so we will take an example of uh, allotropes of carbon so two allotropes of the carbon first is the diamond is a one material and second one is a graphite so diamond and graphite both are made out of same material that is carbon atoms both are made out of carbon atoms you can see both are made out of carbon atoms but if you look at closer if you look at the structure of diamond and the structure of graphite so structure of the diamond so that is a tetrahedron structure and whereas uh, graphite structure is the sheet like structure so many uh, graphene sheet we call it as a graphene sheet the hexagonal array you can see this is a hexagon so, this is a hexagonal array of carbon atoms. This is a sheet. So, such kind of sheets are being stacked one to the, one to the another. So, that is the structure of your graphite and this is the structure of your uh, diamond. So, they were made out of the same material that is a carbon atom. So, in the tetra tetrahedron structure, diamond is having a sp3 hybridization and carbon carbon bonding and the angle between the two carbon atoms that has been given here this is the structure of the uh, diamond so when you look at the graphite so graphite uh, you can take it the coal or the pencil lids itself is your best example for your graphite material so which is having basically hexagonal array of uh, sheets that are been stacked on that are been piled on one together one on top of the another so this is having sp2 hybridization so you can see when they are stacking so so when the carbons are being uh, having uh, bonded in the hexagonal array so this is basically coal and bond and we know that coal and bonds are very very strong in nature and uh, if you look at uh, the bond that is between the two sheets okay the bond between the two sheets that is weak Van der Waal forces, weak Van der Waal forces. This is a basically secondary bonding type, and this is weak Van der Waal uh, forces. So, in the third dimension, in the in, in the third dimension, so it will be having a weak uh, uh, dimension. So, because of this uh, weak binding forces, so this diamond is sorry, this uh, graphite is exhibiting lubricating properties so this uh, so graphite is having lubricating behavior that's why when you write uh, using your uh, pencil lid okay using your pencils you can able to write because basically because of the lubricating behavior of the graphite that is because of that and because of this 
tight uh, covalent bonds between the carbon atoms they were very strong and uh, the moment of this uh, the strength that is required to break these bonds is very very high and so diamond is exhibiting we know that diamond is a hardest material that is known to us right hardest material that is known uh, as of now right basically that is because of this structure tetrahedron structure and because of this sp3 hybridization and uh, strong covalent bonds that are involved in the diamond okay so both if you look at both these materials made out of same carbon atoms but their structure is different because of this structure it is inducing different uh, properties one is hardest known material the diamond and other one which is which is exhibiting lubricating uh, behavior so along with this uh, lubricating behavior so it will be having uh, uh, graphite is electronic transfer the electrical conductivity and thermal conductivity of graphite is also very very high when compared to the diamond so diamond uh, we know electrically inert right so properties are different basically that is uh, so this is the relationship that we were talking about the science that involves the relationship between the structure and property is your material science so this material science subject basically investigates the relation uh, between the structure and the material of the of a particular material right so let us move and try to understand what this material engineering uh, deals with so it involves engineering as i mentioned so it involves designing and engineering of uh, any structure based on the materials so it in, it involves i repeat it it involves designing or uh, engineering of any structure based on the material so in order to produce our predetermined set of properties in order to produce our desired properties okay so this is again uh, the engineering again on the basis of structure property relationships okay now we will try to see what it uh, involves materials uh, engineering so it involves uh, two terminology here one is a processing another one is a performance processing and pro performance so how do you process these materials to get the, your desired set of properties and what are your uh, desired set of properties Uh, so how your engineering will uh, uh, give you your uh, desired set of properties right so if you look at uh, diamonds how they are being formed in the earth's mantle so that is in the this is a pictographical uh, representation or the photograph you can see the different cores of your uh, earth so so deep down in the mantle okay here you can see this is a mantle earth's mantle so here you can able to see here you can able to uh, discover find out your uh, diamonds okay so in this at this uh, earth mantle so you will be having an elevated temperatures temperatures that are ranged from 900 degree centigrade to 1300 degree centigrade and along with that it will be also having a very high pressures almost uh, uh, Six lakh fifty thousand to eight lakh fifty thousand psi uh, pressures will be there. So because of this very high pressures and very high temperatures, the diamonds are being made. This is a processing of these uh, natural processing of these uh, materials. Natural processing of uh, diamond. Okay, diamonds are formed. When they will be formed? So when you when these when the carbon atoms are being exposed to very high temperatures like uh, 900 to 1300 degrees centigrade and to the higher pressures that is 6 lakh 50000 to 8 lakh 50000 psi then these diamonds will be formed with the carbon atoms that are inlined in a tetrahedron uh, structure right so this is a processing that we have to do for producing your uh, diamonds and if you look at uh, the performance the engineering so the best example i can give you is a engineering marvel we call it that is a eiffel tower which is situated in the paris 
So the, the construction of Eiffel Tower itself, it is an engineering marvel, we can call it. So if you look at closely, there are uh, four different uh, platforms. So first, it, it is a base platform, okay, the base platform with the four legs. Then this is a second platform where we, which we have built and this is an interim uh, platform and uh, you can see this is a top uh, platform. So in the four uh, stages, this Eiffel Tower has been uh, constructed right so we have to so when the right shape is been given to the material okay in the desired shape if you put it then uh, this altogether this uh, structure can withstand huge amount of uh, load as you can see this is very tall in nature so heavy winds will be uh, beating uh, the structure and still it will withstand all these uh, heavy winds high pressures and it is still stable Right, so that's why we call it as this is a Eiffel Tower is an engineering marvel for that particular period. So here we will understand these are the four pillars, four components of uh, material science and engineering. So first one that is a processing of the material, the way how we produce it, and then we try to understand. So once the material has been produced, we try to understand the structure of the material. Then we will be uh, then we will uh, try to understand the properties that are exhibiting because of this uh, structure and uh, so what do we do when we have uh, these kind of uh, properties so how do you engineer that is involves in the performance we can say processing processing how do you define it so again this is the structure of the material will be dependent on how it is being uh, processed your structure of the material that is will be all dependent on how it has been processed as we have seen in the previous case diamond when it is being processed at very high temperatures and very high pressures so it will it will be formed similarly if those conditions are been the processing conditions are been ma not maintained same carbon atoms will take the another form that is graphite okay so your processing will basically induces uh, the structure of the material okay or you can say the structure of the materials will be dependent on how it has been processed then the materials performance now you have produced any structure or produced any product right and if you are trying to assess the performance of any material so it all based on the properties of the materials okay it all depends on the properties of the material right so these are the four components that we will be studying in the material science and engineering subject right and they are they were having a uh, interrelationship one and they will be dependent on one on the another and another uh, terminology that we will uh, come across in this course that is a metallurgy metallurgy is the domain of this uh, material science and engineering basically that studies uh, the physical and chemical behavior of metallic elements it only talks about the metallic elements here okay that's why the metallurgy okay so it is a domain of material science and engineering that studies physical and chemical behavior of metallic elements their intermetallic uh, compounds if they produce any intermetallic compounds, the new forms that is the uh, alloys, we call it their mixtures as the alloys. The study about these materials is basically the metallurgy, right? Yes. So, with that, uh, we will try to summarize what we have discussed. So, first, we talked about the, uh, the introduction of your uh, materials. So, what are the different uh, fields that, that these materials have been uh, uh, encountered into like the transportation and the clothing or your housing or the different tools we were using different different uh, materials that we have discussed. Then we have seen an activity, uh, an activity where I have uh, showcased some of the photographs and we have discussed what are the uh, materials that are being involved with okay that particular uh, tool what is the material that it is made out of we have seen right 
then we try to understand the evolution of the materials how materials are evolved around us so we have discussed about uh, different uh, stages different ages what are the different materials that are been available during that period stone age bronze age and iron age and later on the polymer era we have seen we have talked about it and then the silicon age we were talking about and the currently we were in the nano materials or nanotechnology era we were working with materials which were with the very very lower dimensional scales right then we have uh, uh, looked at what is the need for uh, studying about the material so we were having uh, different type of materials and how do you select it selecting the right material so that is where we require studying about the materials we have discussed about it then we have discussed about the material science materials engineering and uh, metallurgy domains and what basically it involves with right so thank you all uh, for watching this uh, video or engaging in this uh, particular series of uh, lectures and thank you everyone